was a delicious dinner, Mrs. Mulligan. It certainly was. But as usual, I ate too much. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mrs. Brown. I always figured when in doubt, sir, pot roast. It's the third time this week she's been in doubt. You're a lucky man, Sergeant Mulligan. Very few wives can cook like that. By the way, what happened to Mickey? Oh, when he excused himself from the table, he said he'd be right back. I think he went to get a surprise for you. Maybe he's up in his room. Michael! Yes, sir, this is the first evening I've really enjoyed myself in a long time. Last night we went out for dinner, and just when things were going along smoothly, the host ruined everything by dragging out his home movies. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the showing of home movies should be made punishable by death. Have I got a surprise for you? Charles? Oh, Michael, I don't believe Mr. and Mrs. Brown would be interested in seeing your home movies. I'm sure he wouldn't. Now, Mom, I've known Mr. Brown much longer than you have. After all, he's been my boss for the past three years. I'm sure he's just dying to see these films, aren't you, sir? <clears throat> see, what did I tell you, Mom? Son, why don't you show your movie some other time? Tonight we'll all just sit and talk. Oh, uh, Mr. Brown will like these pictures. You see, he's in them. Here, plug that in and I'll go get the screen ready. What are you looking for, dear? My sleeping tablets. <laughs> Be with you in a jiffy. What is this, cinemascope? Oh, it's army surplus. Oh, Michael, that's what you're doing. Oh, sorry. Oh, Mr. Brown, would you give me a hand with this, please? Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Right. Sorry. No, again. Accidents will happen. Well, I, I won't be needing you, sir. I can do it myself. Feel free to call on me at any time. Yes. Ah! Oh, oh, Mr. Brown. Sorry. Sorry. While Michael's getting ready, I'll get the coffee. Thank you. There's, there's Mom outside watering the flowers. That's a horrible picture of me. I wish you'd burn it. Nonsense, Nell. You look like a movie queen. What on earth is that? Oh, oh, that's Maxie, the neighbor's little dog. He's cute, isn't he? I ought to sign that dog up. I could build a show around him. Charles, what's that? This is the surprise I was telling you about, Mr. Brown. I took these pictures three weeks ago of you and this woman coming out of the artist entrance at the network. Isn't that Cynthia Umstead? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember these pictures being taken. I know, I know. I, I was hiding in a bush. I, I wanted to get you by surprise. You know, candid pictures, unrehearsed. Who is that woman anyway, sir? Boy, she's a knockout, isn't she, Mrs. Brown? Michael, I think we've seen enough of your movies tonight. Why don't you turn the machine off? Yes, yes. We, we should be going. Shouldn't we, Alice? Do you? Then you can find me quite interesting. I knew you'd be surprised when you saw these pictures, Mr. Brown. Now, aren't you glad you came? I think I canceled a dental appointment for this. <laughs> Film broke. Why couldn't that have happened sooner? I'll have it fixed in a jiffy. No, really, we must be going. I hate to leave, but I'm suddenly very tired of everything. Oh, I do hope you'll come uh, again. Just a minute, Miss Alice. Alice. Let me get your coat. Alice, don't jump at any rash conclusions. After all, dear, we've been married too long to let a petty little thing like this upset us. Maybe we've been married too long, period. Oh, who was that lady anyway, Mrs. Brown? A friend of yours? Oh, Michael, why she... don't you go put your projector away? Cynthia Armstead is no friend of mine. Mr. Brown seems to be the authority on that subject. You beast! Alice! Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, thank you for a very lovely evening. Alice! Good night, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Alice, wait a minute. Let me explain it. How do you like that? Except just because the splice broke. <laughs> uh, 
operator. Would you please try that number for me again? I'm trying to call my home, and I think the line's out of order. Every time I get it, somebody hangs up. Oh. Well, thanks anyway. Come in, Pat. Oh, I wondered if I could speak to you, Mr. Brown. Mulligan, you're pressing your luck. Mr. Brown, sir, I just wanted to come in to apologize because after you and your wife left last night, my, my folks explained the situation to me. And I feel as though I had something to do with your predicament. <laughs> something to do with it? You're being modest. Well, I hope that you and Mrs. Brown have straightened out your little differences. To be perfectly frank with you, Mrs. Brown and I have... <laughs> F.T. Uh, not really. Do you know what I had for breakfast this morning? Glass of warm tomato juice, cup of cold coffee, and a day-old biscuit. That's terrible, terrible. Do you know what I had? I had orange juice, some cereal, scrambled eggs, and Danish pastry. I'm not interested in what you had for breakfast. I'm so full of candy bars I could pop. Oh, and I had some sausage, too. Mulligan. And a peanut butter and dill pickle sandwich. S Stop it! <laughs> Why do you hate me? I hate you? Why, Mr. Brown, sir, I don't hate you. I, I admire you. Look, I, I brought you that film of you and that lady. Blackmail. Oh, no, sir. No, I, I want you to have the film so you can destroy it so you won't have to worry. It's too late. I'm afraid the curtains come down on the last act of my marriage. No. I shall be living alone in a small, smoky apartment, eating in restaurants, table for one. I may even keep a cat for company. A cat? What kind of cat? I think a Siamese. You like Siamese? Maybe a Persian. I like Persians best. They get Who cares it. what kind of a cat? Sorry, I was just trying to help you, sir. Oh, Alice would only listen to reason. But she gets so upset. This morning she packed and said she was going to go home to her mother. She completely forgot that her mother's staying with us. I think Siamese are smarter than Persians. Alice should realize that Cynthia means absolutely nothing to me. Yes, sir. I haven't seen her in over two years. She just returned from Europe and we happened to bump into each other. Yes, sir. We're old school chums. Nothing more. Nothing more. Cynthia couldn't hold a candle to Alice. This is ridiculous. I'll just call Alice, tell her I love her, and... and... Hello? Alice? This is Charles. <laughs> Alice! Hello? Alice? Still out of order. Mr. Brown, is there, is there anything I can do? No, I'm afraid there's nothing anyone can do. The only thing that would convince Alice that Cynthia isn't out to hook me would be for her to go off and get married to someone else. Well, maybe she will. No, not Cynthia Olmstead. She's a wealthy widow and she aims to keep it that way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to look through the ads for bachelor apartments. Well, well it looks pretty serious. Where's, uh, where's Pat? Coffee break. Uh, uh, does it look like, uh, divorce? Well, it doesn't look good. He's gonna get a cat, you know what that means. A cat? Uh, what does it mean? That means they're on the verge of... And all because of this home record. Mm. Yeah, do you mind if I read it, please? Society leader returns from European fling. Hmm. Cynthia Olmsted, widow of the late hat rack tycoon, J. Barnaby Olmsted, returned recently from a two-year sojourn in the fun capitals of Europe when questioned about her recent romantic interlude with Arab prince Ahmed Ab 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 Abdullah. Abdullah, Mrs. Olmsted commented, it's all off. He liked his polo ponies better than me. Say fini. Hmm. Uh, hey, what, what does that uh, uh, cest fini mean? It's French. French. Rough translation, I'm going to see my lawyer.
Hey, that uh, prince is a pretty good-looking guy, huh? Uh-huh. Prince Ahmed Ab... Ab... Uh, Abdullah. Abdullah. Yeah. It's too bad they had to separate. It would help Mr. Brown. Huh? How do you figure? Oh, Mr. Brown just told me the only way he could solve his troubles is if this Cynthia Almstead would marry somebody else. Hmm. Hey, Nick. Yeah? You know, this Prince Ahmed Ab... Uh, Ab Abdullah. Ab Abdullah. He's not the only Arab in the world, you know. What do you mean? Well, if this Cynthia goes for Arab princes, yeah. we'll introduce him to another one. What do, you, what do you mean? Well, it'd be nice if we knew him. Uh, huh? Oh, no. No, Freddy. Oh, yeah. Freddy, no. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Speaking. Oh, yes. Send him right up, please. My secret admirer is on his way up. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I like my brand new wife entertaining strange Arabs while we're still on our honeymoon. <laughs> oh. oh, I think this will be fun, Ahmed, darling. It's obviously a newspaper reporter trying to masquerade his way into an exclusive interview about me being spurned by my Arab prince. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait to see the faces on the reporters when we officially announce we were secretly married three weeks ago in Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you better hurry and hide in the back room, darling. That phony Arab prince will be knocking at the door any second now. If he wants to play games, we'll play right along with him. <laughs> right. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is it? I just thought of something terrible. What if he isn't a phony Arab prince? <laughs> Believe me, he's phony. When he telephoned to make the date this morning, I distinctly heard someone in the background holler, Hey, Mulligan, hurry up. I want to try this turban on you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I've never heard of an Arab named Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you hurry. You have to change into your other clothes. We'll teach this artificial Arab a lesson he'll never forget. Don't overdo it, beloved. And remember, don't come out until I give you the cue. Just a moment, please. To have kept you. Your slave, madam. I <laughs> you, His Highness Prince Abu Ben Ali. <laughs> your obedient servant, madam. I've come all the way from my native Arabia just to feast my eyes upon your beauty. I am honored, your Highness. Come and sit by my side, Prince Abu Ben Ali. My friends call me Benny. <laughs> my, my cape, please. Oh, yes, master. Anything, master. If Anything. I want you, Hamel, I will send for you. Oh, yes, your highness. I hear and obey. Oh, Lord of the mountains of the moon. Not too much. May you live to be a thousand years, oh, master of the universe. Oh, oh calm of the island. Be gone, Hamel. Yes, master. I hear and obey. At last, we are alone. Yes. <laughs> huh? uh. Oh, that Hamal. He makes me terribly nervous. But you know how tough it is today to acquire slaves. Let's not talk of slaves. Let's talk about you and me. You are frightened at being alone with me, yes? I'm not frightened. <laughs> yes, you are. Benny knows. Uh, don't you think that you could get Abu a nice cool drink? Oh, of course. How rude of me not to offer you one before. <laughs> Excuse me. But of course, my dear. What will it be, Your Highness? Uh, goat's milk. Pure Arabian goat's milk is all I ever drink. Uh, you undoubtedly have none about, have you? Why, I most certainly have. You do? I certainly. I always keep goat's milk on hand in case an Arab prince should drop in. I'll get you a glass. Oh, oh no, no, don't go to any trouble now. No trouble at all. Hey, Fred. You summon me, O oh sheik of the burning. She's outside. Now, listen. I think we bit off more than we can chew. 
She's too anxious. Oh, Mick, you're doing great. She's falling for you like a ton of bricks. Yeah, but I didn't think that I had that much charm. Mick, when it comes to charm, you're loaded. Yeah. Well, I bet she forgot about Mr. Brown already. Yeah. I hate to do this to her, but it is for Mr. Brown. It's, it's for a good cause, huh? Yeah. Now, look, you keep the charm going. Yeah. I'll keep snapping the pictures, right. and we'll have enough evidence to convince Mrs. Brown. Yeah, that's if I can live through the goat's milk. <laughs> Donnie, aren't you overdoing it a bit? When a sly newspaper man comes here pretending to be an Arabian prince and asks for goat's milk, he's going to get it. But good. Mustard, too. Just a dash. For <laughs> play. Ah, darling, I must get back to my distinguished guest. And remember, don't come in until I give you the cue. Cheers. Here you are, Your Highness. I hope this meets with your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Bob! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Boo, there are tears in your eyes. I can't help it, my dear. It reminds me of home. Are you sure this is genuine Arabian goat's milk? But of course, darling. What year? Drink it, Abu. Drink it. Hamal! You summoned, Master. Uh, never mind about my photos for my scrapbook, uh, Hamal. Taste this. Huh? You know, you have to taste everything before I do, in case it's poisoned. Why, Abu, darling? Oh, uh, no offense to you, my dear. It's an old tribal custom. You see, he drinks, we wait three minutes. If he's still alive, then I drink it. You, you really wanted this, Master? Hear and obey. Well? A moment for meditation, Master. Oh, you're so dynamic, so vibrant, so, so... You're so friendly. Oh, uh, oh. It's delicious, Master. Uh, I recommend it for your pleasure. You wouldn't kid me now. You see, Abu, there's no risk. Your slave seems to be in the best of health. and plant died. I think I'd best punish myself and not drink this. Uh, you may go, Hamal. Abu, darling, your nerves are upset. Sit back and relax. I'll bring you the nargilia. The what? <laughs> the nargilia. Oh, 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 that. <laughs> oh, back in my country, we, we call those water pipes. <laughs> Your pipe is filled and ready for you, Your Highness. I... I don't know. I've, I've never smoked the king size. I'm only a prince. I thought every Arab prince smoked in Arginia. Uh, well, I, I'm trying to cut down, you know. <coughs> yes, I've already smoked three packs of these already today. I'm beginning to wonder if you are a real Arab prince. I'll show you if I'm a real Arab or not. Hamal! Hamal, come here, please. Hey, smoke this. Do I have to, Master? You first, and then the potted plant. <laughs> Go ahead, it's just a water pipe. and go and smoke it after dinner. Alas, <laughs> we are truly alone, Abu, beloved. Well, it's very nice to be alone with you, my dear, but couldn't we just talk romantically for about ten minutes? I can't help myself. I'm under your spell. 
Did you get it, Hamel? Hold it for one more. I had my finger over the lens. You can pose for pictures later, darling. After we're married. Kiss me, Abu. This is the cue. The cue? Yes, the cue. <laughs> You were 6,000 miles away. So? I wish I was 6,000 miles away. <laughs> At last we meet Abu Ben Ali. Our tribes have been at war for centuries. And now we come to the showdown. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I don't think your tribe ever even met my tribe. Enough! We're both in love with the same woman. And by the ancient custom of our land, there's only one way to settle it. And you know what that is. Do you want heads or tails? No, we'll duel to the death. Huh? Dry your sword. Well, so, wait, wait a minute. Look, look, my, my, my tribal chiefs at Eastern, they only gave me just a, a, a wooden sword, that's all. See? Yeah, a... Boo, my darling. Show me how much you care for me. <laughs> no help from the audience, please. Oh, God. <laughs> Just remember, Abu, one of us must die. It is so written in the stars. Look, look maybe the stars could be wrong. Look, I'm, at, I'm not in love with Cynthia. I'm not even a real Arab. <laughs> you can't fool me. You duel too well. May the better Arab win. <laughs> Hold it. Ah! I did not. I didn't even touch him. He must have taken a dive. He's dead. Take me away, Abu, beloved. Dead? Well, that's impossible. Oh, look, Cynthia, I've got to tell you something. I'm not a real Arab prince. I'm not even in love with you. What are you saying? You spurn my love. You cast me away like an old shoe. No, please, now Life listen. isn't worth living. Farewell, Abu, beloved. Uh, no, wait a minute, Cynthia. Don't do anything silly. Don't. Cynthia, can you hear me? Gosh, so many people dying around here. I don't even get a chance to explain. Look, Freddie, you got me into this thing. Now, what am I going to do? Oh, please, will you? Now I'm going to have to call the police. They didn't waste any time, did they? Carl, down. I've got... Ah, Mr. Brown! What are you doing? Devlin, what are you fellas... Great Scott. What have you done? I, I thought I was helping you and your wife out, Mr. Brown. Wasn't there any easier way, Mulligan? There... Oh, Charles, you should have been here. You missed the greatest show on earth. <laughs> you should have seen the expression on the boy's face when he thought he killed me. Oh, Prince Ahmed. Of course. This is my husband, Prince Ahmed, husband. Mr. Brown. Well, congratulations. How do you your know? husband? You mean, you, and you're not dead. Of course not. Do we look at What do you know, Mick? They're, they're not dead. Yeah. Yeah, there must have been a joke or something, huh? <laughs> I better test it first to see that I've got it threaded right. Hi there, I'm Mickey Rooney. It's working all right now. All right, everybody, you can come in. Make a wonderful couple, Joe. Imagine Sergeant Mulligan having a real prince to dinner. I was delighted to hear that you and Ahmed are married. Your husband said you would be. Mr. Brown, you'll never know what marrying Cynthia has done for me. <laughs> you'll never know what it's done for me. And now, folks, if you'll all sit down, I'm ready to run off some shots for you. Oh, no, not again. Now, you don't have to worry. I've got some wonderful shots of you this time, Mr. Brown. Before you show your movies, I want to show you something. What? I'd hate to see your girlfriend, Pat, get hold of this, wouldn't you? Gosh, Pat ever saw this, why she'd never speak to me again. That's exactly what I thought when I persuaded Freddie to give me the negative. <laughs> well? Well, uh, oh, I have a wonderful idea, folks. Instead of running movies tonight, what do you say we all play charades? Charades? Yes, charades. <laughs> <laughs> charades? Back in just a moment. Oh. And that was the word from the folks who will be bringing you our next show. I hope you'll be with us then. Nargilia. <laughs>